But Trump gets reelected, what? Fucking city's burned. I'll straight up, right? I'll straight up get armed. The gulags and the persecution of the gulags and things like that are exaggerated. It is unfortunate that we have to make plans for extreme action. We don't want to scare people off. So you kind of got to feel it out first before you get into the crazy stuff. Stuff like Antifa, you know, you're talking about the yellow vests. It's going to take militancy uh, and, if necessary, just destroy property. I think it's also fair to point out that when we were in Moscow, for example, people here also were extremely impressed by their public transportation system. Meet Daniel Taylor and Mason Baird, both field organizers for the Sanders campaign in South Carolina, and the next two subjects of our undercover investigation of extreme radicalism inside the Sanders campaign. I canvassed with someone who's like uh, uh, an anarchist, and I canvassed with someone who's you know more more of a, a Marxist Leninist, and so we do it. I mean, we track to um, you know radi radical, like truly radical people to the campaign, um, but uh, that's obviously not like outward facing sort of. I'm burning. Does he know that? Um, well, I think we're. I think the goal is just to build a, uh, you know, to build a build a coalition of people, and and a lot of those people who who, who do that kind of work are are, you know, their their politics fall well outside of the American sort of norms. So they're Marxist Leninists, they're anarchists, they're these types of folks, and um, and they have more of a mind for direct action, for engaging in politics outside of the electoral system. Like here we think of, you know, gulags being sent off to Russia, to Siberia, and like lock away, you know, lock you up, throw away the key. And they were saying that is such a misconception. They're like re-education camps. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about that? Pardon me. I'm afraid no. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because um, I think, uh, I think at least my region of, of kind of that Cold War era, era is that you had two massive, you know, you had these huge opposing ideologies and empires and superpowers, and when you have that much power, um, each side is going to do everything it can to control a narrative and to, and to, um, to sort of have its own truth. Um, to, to, to support its uh, sort of sort of power structure and things like that. And so I think that um, I think if we pay attention to, to the lived experience of people in, in, in post-Soviet states and in, and in Russia and things like that, then we do find that, yeah, like a lot of the stories were told in the United States about, you know, the gulags and the persecution of the kulaks and things like that are exaggerated. Um, I think there were certainly excesses and certain, you know, of, well, our, our, own, our own American empire has its own excesses, of course. So I think, um, you know, I, uh, I think that's, that it's probably exaggerated on our side. And maybe there's also a little bit of, um, a little bit of over justification or excuses for the excesses uh, that, 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 that probably did occur. Um, but but uh, we certainly don't have a, a, a a straight perspective on that stuff here in America. This hasn't worked. We've tried it for three years. He's still there and it gets stronger. Well, for me personally, I have I have no problem going all in on the campaign stuff because you are planning a seat. You you need people to understand that the things that we're fighting for are things we should have had all along. But for a lot of people, it seems extreme because it never has been. You know, a lot of the social programs that we're pushing are things that other countries have had for a long time, but we've never had. Like the, the whole socialist thing four years ago was a lot more toxic than it is today. I think people are finally starting to realize that maybe it's not such a bad thing. What's troubling is Baird and Taylor both speak of the possibilities of extreme violence coming from the Sanders campaign and want to keep it hush-hush in order, quote, not to scare people off, unquote. It's, you it's all look so, so mild-mannered, but boy, you've got fire in your belly, <laughs> don't you? Well, I think, you know, we don't want to scare people off. So you kind of got to feel it out first before you get into the crazy stuff. But um, what kind of crazy stuff? Tell me, you know, we were talking about, you know, more, more extreme organizations and stuff like Antifa. You know, you're talking about the yellow vests, and all that. But 
you know, we're kind of keeping that, keeping that in the, in the back burner for right now. Do you yeah, think yeah, that it, so when fun. Bernie's elected and okay, now you've got all those Trump people and we're talking, I mean, that was a pretty tight split. Mm -hmm. So you've got almost half the country that are haters. Mm -hmm. How how are you going to tame that beast? What are you going to do with them? I mean, you need something really radical that what yeah. you're proposing is great. And I agree with you. Mm -hmm. The best thing is by example, mm -hmm. but that takes forever. I mean, it these does. people are angry. Yeah. It's They're not, not gonna. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it is a huge source of anxiety for me. So it, I mean it's like that's definitely. But like I think um, we have to think in those ways, yeah, right? Absolutely, and it's I mean it's just, I mean it's with my family too. I mean it's like you know within my family that I have this kind of uh, Trump -ites. confronted by that kind of stuff, and not even explicitly Trump people, just you know that like like they like if push came to shove, they would go that way. Um, and, uh, that is, um, it's sort of, uh, it would, it's going to take, um, you know, it's going to take militancy. How do we do it? Uh, it's a militant labor movement. Um, is kind of our last, um, our last real kind of chance before, you know, we, we try other, other means, other means. And I, I just don't see it as that, um, I mean, see an, that an empire has never been uh, sort of toppled through internal struggle. So it's like, I don't really see that working out, you know? You know, where do we, we, we have all this momentum, where do we go after it's over, right. regardless of the outcome? Because it's not gonna, I feel like change is not gonna happen easily, regardless. Even if Bernie is elected, change will not come swiftly or easily. Right. So we have to, you know, the connections that we're making now within the campaign and with other volunteers and at events, it's very important that we retain that, regardless of the outcome. And, you know, it, it it is unfortunate that we have to make plans for extreme action, but like I said, it's, they're not going to give it to us, even if Bernie is elected. Barrett is so extreme, he speaks as if it's common knowledge Sanders will, quote, abolish landlords, unquote, and even compare Sanders' revolution to the Russian Revolution of 1917. He seems to think that even though he'd like less bloodshed, armed struggle is inevitable. After we abolish landlords, we don't have to, we don't have to kill them. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's my, I mean, that's my feeling. I think that's damaging to the soul. But, um, <laughs> there you go, Mike. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, um, <clears throat> you know, there were, there were plenty of excesses in 1917 that I would hope to avoid. Um, but like, Admire see, it. I, I'm very, uh, like I said, I'm very black and white. I see things in very binary terms. Mm -hmm. And I just see a big clash happening, and it's, it's going to be a power struggle. And power struggles are not nice. Uh, you don't no. talk your way out of them. No. Uh, it's a strong, you know, it's the law of the jungle. Right. I think. Um, so, how do you jungle up? I think it goes back again for me. Uh, it's like labor. Uh, I think that's a big source of power Hello. for us. Um, hey, um, or Mike, or with the Bernie Sanders try campaign, to gain I just want to as invite Ms. Sandra to a meeting we're having. Uh, Are you Ms. Sandra? In the short time that we have before... We'll see you back again. Take care. 1917 Redux. Right, because, I mean, it's really incredible. I mean, you know, Lenin, Lenin didn't have the, Lenin didn't have the internet. They, they weren't done I mean, they weren't even they I mean they were a peasant society I mean, I mean it was like so you know you know I would hope that like uh, that we would um, we'd have we'd, we'd be do we'd be doing a bunch of prep work right before before uh, before the capitalists got hip to what we were doing, I guess. I mean, that's kind of the best. Uh, I'm not. I'm not excited about the prospect of like armed 
struggle. So that's... Um, but don't you see it? Do you see it as inevitable or not? I see it as possible. Huh? I see it as possible. Yeah. You do? Oh, yeah. I just never want to kill anybody. <laughs> you know, that you just reminded that me of... me a lot. Um, so... But but aren't aren't in building this movement? Are we are we moving it further along that way? Is that where we're going with it? I would say most people in the movement are in it to avoid going that far, and there's a wing of the movement that 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 sees that as the. Um, Inevitable. Yeah. Baird speaks of nationalizing things like Facebook and Google before diving into his talk of violence towards people's property. In the first time in like my life, maybe even, I mean, probably most of our lives in American history, we, we're going to have, like if we have Bernie in the White House, we're going to have a real plan for dual power mm-hmm. where we'll have the presidency and we'll have a mass movement right alongside it that's like going to be like institutionalized and, um, and supported. And it's, and I'd like to participate. That's part of it is once we break up Google, break up YouTube, break up Facebook, national, I mean, for me, nationalize these things, right. then that, that'd be a huge step forward as far as education right. and, um, and that stuff goes. So, like, how how does Bernie really plan to do it, though? I mean, like, he, so, I get all that, mm-hmm. and now, but but he's planning to fund all his programs mm-hmm. from them. Mm-hmm. So, how are they, I mean, they're not just going to roll over and die and say, here's my money, redistribute it. Yeah, yeah. Um, how does that work? I mean, it's going to take... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's when we get into, like, the really, like, when we get into really nuts and bolts stuff, that's what I struggle with thinking about is, um, the only, my only answer is kind of, like, vague, is, is just, like, the, you know, having, you know, the movement and having, um, and, 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 and snowballing that movement and, uh, and, um, thinking more explicit like maybe less maybe thinking less about mobilize or thinking less about persuading people and more about mobilizing the people we already have so that's why i emphasize mobilizing the people that are already with us instead of persuading people who who might need persuading because Uh, at the end of the day like uh. at the end of the day these people like reactionaries and as you go further right reactionaries you know and, and fascists. But you're going to have. These but you're going to have a clash. Right, well, these people are motivated by by fear, and if we mobilize, and if we show, we make a show of force and a show, and show that like hey, we're very very strong, and we're we've organ we've put in work, and we're very powerful now. Um, I think you'll have a good many people who are going to back down off of, who are going to be so afraid that they're that they're going to back down off that position. So do you mean like? Armed, um, armed resistance. I hope. I hope. No, I mean, I, I don't think we're there yet, and I hope not. But just like a, a militant labor movement that's willing to um, one strike, uh, and if necessary, uh, uh, just you know, just destroy property and things like that. Um, that would be my. That would be my my, my escalation. Right. Um, we would need a federal government and a labor movement that is working together to to strip power away from from capitalist and, and and preferably directing that violence towards property. Um, at the end of the day, I think this stuff is going to come out through praxis, through the work, and it's it's hard for me to like talk about it in the moment we live in because I think like you know China today is not what um, Mao envisioned, right? It was that it, it was it was through the praxis of, the, of 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 billions of Chinese people 
you know, doing doing the work to, to create the China today. And um, so it's never we're never going to, I think a lot of the stuff, a lot of these answers are going to come through practice. We're going to try things. Things aren't going to work. We're going to move on to the next thing. And we, we're going to try to be as conscious and intentional about those things. But when you get into a certain level of detail and, and depth, it's like... It, it, I'm gonna move your back. That's kind of my cop out. Is like it, it comes through the work, you know. See the that. answers come through the work. This is it. I mean, this is this is the, the beginning. The, cam the of campaign is we're consciously all the time. This is what we're saying all the time on this campaign is after South Carolina, after the primaries, after the general, this doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. You know, where this this is um and that that was Bernie's promise. He said, you know, this isn't Obama 2008 where a massive movement got him elected, and then he said. All right, thanks, y'all. Goodbye. You know, it's, it's right. over now. Um, Bernie said that that's that that the only way that we're gonna Succeed. the only way we're gonna live is if is if we have this mass movement going uh, after after the election. Taylor seems quite confident that Sanders would endorse extreme action. If God forbid he should lose, I can't even think I of that. Good. Do you think he'll be on board to like? join forces with the rest of us and really make, you know, well, yeah. we need a revolution, don't well, we? he has a history of protest. And, you know, that's what makes him so attractive to a lot of the, the younger people who are fed up with bureaucracy, is that Bernie has been uh, out there on, standing on the picket lines hey, and so doing the uncomfortable stuff. And I absolutely think that he would endorse that kind of action because, you know, sometimes that's what you got to do to get it done. As we continue to expose radicals inside the Sanders campaign, the question must be asked, are these people representative of the campaign or not? If not, shouldn't the campaign disavow these workers? Or are they the true face of the campaign and the candidate himself?